And the first one is Sask One, and since he's higher up on the Sask One committee than I am, although we are both working on it. Okay, so I'm not going to go up to the, because I'm sitting behind the mic, um, not go up, but everyone else should. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, membership numbers. We have 4,043 attending members, 5,410 supporting memberships, a total of 9,770 9, uh, total memberships. Um, we will probably clear 10K by the end of the month. Um, the uh, other thing I'd like people to know is that we are really looking forward to an awesome convention. I mean, numbers aside. Um, uh, as many of you know, our guest of honor, Leslie Turk, uh, helped invent and popularize something called First Night, and the First Night at Sasquan is going to be awesome. It's going to be out in the park, at the river. People are starting to develop games, and other, you know, all the bids have come in and, and, and done things, and there's going to be some sort of alternate site selection thing involving ducks um, <laughs> uh, to, um, to, to play with, but it's going to be a really fun time time in the park, and people are just really jazzed about it. Dave Weingart has done an awesome job with that. Um, uh, we know, we, uh, we, as many of you know, one of our uh, special guests is uh, uh, Dr. Chell Lundgren. Uh, Dr. Lundgren will be on the International Space Station, we hope, during the convention, and will be participating from low Earth orbit, uh, from the, uh, from, well, from orbit, uh, and uh, will be uh, hopefully uh, giving us a few surprises from space. Um, it, it has allowed us to put on our membership page one <laughs> orbit one. You know, <laughs> when we live break down by country, orbit we are space one. Um, uh, let's see what else could I possibly tell you? Uh, oh, I should tell you that um, uh, the uh, Hugo ballot deadline is the end of the month. Um, the site selection mail in is the tenth of next month. We will be taking. Um, token payments until the 18th of August in order to allow people who want to walk in to, or give their ballots to people to be walked in to pay up to the last moment. But remember that if you're mailing it, it has to be in by the 10th. So it's just an extra for people who are walking ballots to, to have an extra time to pay. Uh, let's see, the other thing, uh, the other hot tip I'd like to give people is um, if you are booking a room or still want to book a room, um, a lot of the hotels have space but have little gaps, so sometimes if you try to book over a gap, the, the hotel registration system will say, oh, no, no availability. So what I would suggest you do is <clears throat> book for whatever you can in whatever hotel you can and for whatever narrow period, even a toehold of a single night, and then write to HB, that stands for Housing Bureau, HB at sasquan.org and ask them, um, uh, to help you out, and they'll do the best they can. So sometimes the CVB can get us get you stuff that the the the, the software can't, and they've been really good about it. Um, I think that's the the highlights, you know, and the things that are really important at this point. I'll I'll open for questions. Remind us the guest of honor. Oh, and the city, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> the city. Yeah, yeah, the city of Spokane, Washington. Uh, let's see. Our guests of honor are David Gerald, Vonda McIntyre, um, Tom Smith, Leslie Turek, Brad. Ah, Brad. and Brad Foster, right. Um, and, and I mentioned our special guest, Children Lindgren, um, starting August 19th through the 23rd. Other questions? Yes, Linda. Um, what, what is sundown in Spokane in August? Late. Okay, so she wondered when sundown was. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's going to be late, like 8 or 9 at least. 9.30. 9.30, thank you. No, it's not. It's earlier than that. Well, okay. Uh, I'm sure there are almanacs online which could answer the question better than I can. Um, Kevin. Okay, so um, that's actually Mike's department here, but uh, I talked to him a little bit about this. Oh, when, when, when are people hosting parties going to get sweet information? Um, the hotel has been problematic to deal with. Um, they, uh, Mike here has, has been getting uh, on it you know, them every day, 
practically emails back and forth um, as soon as possible is the right answer. Uh, I can't give you a precise date because they're being um, challenging. challenging. Yes, that's the right word. Um, but I would suggest, Kevin, that you talk to Mike offline and get more going there. Yes. Okay, so she wants to know how we, what we are, what we are doing and what we have done to attract diverse audiences. Okay, so there are a bunch of things. Um, one of which is that we have been very supportive of something called Connor Bust, and we have not only donated memberships but encouraged other people to donate memberships to Connor Bust. Uh, someone, an anonymous person, who will stay anonymous, uh, just donated uh, 23 memberships to Connor Bust. Um, uh, the other things, um, huh? What is Connor? Connor Bust is a, um, uh, a, a an organization, a website uh, that is designed to uh, create sponsorships for people of color to uh, attend conventions, right? So people donate memberships and then they take in uh, applications and disperse them. Um, the other thing we've been doing is, um, uh, you know, there are a few people uh, who uh, represent diversity already that, that normally attend WorldCons, and we've been trying to work through them to encourage them to bring their friends, their families, to get a ripple out, you know, kind of thing. Um, so, like, recently somebody tweeted about it, and it was like, yeah, bring you know, tell the people you know. Tell them, because that's how outreach works. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's hard to do it in a kind of, you know, you're not going to, like, write an ad, right, for this, right? So it has to be, like, on the person-to-person -person scale. And, you're, and, and I would do the same thing here. Say, tell your friends. Tell whoever you know, right? Bring in, bring in you know, and, and the message I would tell them is that everyone is welcome, regardless of... Shape, size, color, creed, I don't care, right? Everybody is welcome, right? And, and uh, you know, we're hoping that uh, we can start something of a groundswell. So it's not going to happen immediately. It's what's going to happen year over year. So we invite some more people. Some more people come to Worldcon uh, of a, you know, to add to the diversity pool, right? Then we work with Mac2 to get them to take our pool and make it larger. And it's not going to happen instantaneously for us, but it's going to happen year over year over year. But it has to be conscious and it has to be growth. And it has to be, you know, aware. But I, I can't, there's no, um, there's no magic bullet, unfortunately. There's no, um, you know, way of, of just doing it, right? Um, so it's been very mano a mano. Does that answer your question? Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay, so um, a number of the hotels. Oh, what is it like to get from the hotel, uh, uh, from the airport to the hotel? I assume you mean GEG, uh, Spokane Airport. Um, a number of the uh, hotels, the DoubleTree and um, several of the others, have hotel shuttles. Notably, the Davenport doesn't. Well, they have a thing the, hotel shuttle, it's not free. Oh, it's not free. Okay, they have a shuttle, but it's not free. They're also super shuttle. Um, and things like that. But most of the hotels have shuttle, their own free shuttles. Depends on which property you're... Huh? Uber is about $15. Uber is $15. There you go. How close, how close is the site to the airport? About 15 miles. Yeah. And then once you're there, is there public transit? How do you get to any attractions? Okay, so... Spokane is actually a fairly dense city. Uh, as it goes, the city center is very close. A lot of the things that are attractions about Spokane are fairly close, right? Uh, things like the, the gondola over the falls and stuff like that you can walk to from the convention center. Uh, everything else, much about Spokane is about wilderness, right? And so it's really a drive. You, you, you rent a car and you drive, and you go see Glacier National Park, or you go see the... Um, Cattails, which is a uh, feline preserve, right? They have or you, tours. Huh, they have tours. tours the oh, and there are tours on the website. That's also true. Right. Thank you. Um, so for the so really, there is transit. There is you know transit inside Spokane, but I don't think you're going to need it, really. Oh, thank you. Also, uh, we've uh, negotiated for a ring route shuttle, so there'll be a shuttle that leaves from the convention center or starts. Whatever you want to think of it, starts at the convention center and goes to the various hotels and returns and just runs a loop. Yeah, two loops. 
Two loops? One on the north for the red lions, one in the south for the north. There you go. So more like a figure eight. Yeah. Something like. Thank you, Mike. No, it runs as two different routes. It was more efficient that way according to the chart. Yeah, it was more efficient that way according to the chart. Other questions? Thank you for your time.